Oh, Rennie, The Bricklayer. My God. I've got to see this movie three different ways, and that is IMAX. I want to see it in RPX. I want to see it in a regular theater, and then I also want to go to a drive-in to see this. I want to experience this on every uh-huh. screen. Thank you so much. That's great to hear. You had to have been thinking about where is my viewer and my fan going to be when you put this together? Well, you know, you don't really want to think about it because you just want to do your best and, and you know, call me old school, but I grew up making movies, uh, watching movies in theaters and making movies for movie theaters. And uh, I I try to, you know, whether it's the the locations and the sets I choose or the way I light the sets or the camera angles or how I portray the action or the characters I uh, or how I do the sound work or the music. I want it to be the biggest, best experience uh, they could they could ever have. And if if the audience sees it on IMAX or big screen or drive in, fantastic. If they see it uh, on their flat screen TV or their tablet or their phone, awesome main thing is that they see it yeah. and that, that they know that we've done everything we could to give them the best movie in terms of story and character and action and technically something that you know no matter where they watch it it'll be enjoyable i'll tell you one of the things that i was really inspired by was the bricklayer's story where you know you know be, you don't see too many people that are laying bricks nowadays and and it's like when when i saw that scene unfolding in front of me i'm going oh my god this in a subliminal way is inviting people look go out there and get a real job doing something like this even if even if you've been a spy of some sort in the past do something to build the the foundation Exactly. I think that's a that's a very good point. And and uh, like Aaron's character, uh, the bricklayer says, it's like he he finds peace in in working with something that he can touch, that he knows the form and function. It's a brick, and putting bricks together, you can build something. And I think in nowadays, a lot of the times, you know, people w- with their electronic devices, they they've uh, they've forgotten you know, the the touch of the materials and doing something, like you said, doing something with your own hands. So I, I'm with you. It's I think it's it's for kids, for teenagers, for young people, for anybody. It's great to be in touch with with reality and with nature and uh and yeah, build something with your own hands. Taking this movie set to Greece, I mean, you are a tour guide with this because I find myself, when, you know, one of the reasons why I watch a movie so many times is I, I want to look at the background, I want to see what the storyline is going on, and then I got to go look at the background again because I'm, I'm always looking for something back there to be a part of the story. Well, that's great that you appreciate that because actually this movie, when I got the screenplay, it was written to take place in Berlin. Wow. And I read it and I was like, you know, I feel like I've seen a lot of movies that take place in Berlin and I find Berlin a little gray and little kind of depressing. Sorry, Berlin, but that's how I felt from the movies I've seen. And I said, you know, why don't we set this up in, in an environment that we haven't seen so much? And uh, I thought of Greece and I, I thought, you know, it could like feel really warm and 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 somewhat colorful and beautiful and you know it's an action movie but but why can't it take place in some some beautiful environment so we put a lot of energy into the locations and into the sets and into the lighting and the camera work to really give audience uh give them a journey give them you know make them feel like they are taken somewhere else from their regular life in something a little more a little more exotic and visual and uh and so the the location really becomes a character in the story uh, b- besides the, the people and the action and all that. And the story has a little bit of fear with it because, I mean, what are the chances that a rogue insurgent blackmails the CIA and and, and everything that's taking place, you're going, oh my God, it, it, it has to be the CIA. And that's when you got to bring in the man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I love the script because it is, it is complicated and... Uh, my job was to to navigate it so that the audience understands what's going on, but they can't guess who's behind this and who's who's doing this. <laughs> and you know, we we all we all know that these spy agencies, you know, 
they 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 are pretty wacky wacky companies and you know they are doing great work uh uh serving our country and and keeping us safe but they they also have to do a lot of dirty work so sometimes sometimes it's it's hard to know who the good guys and the bad guys are how how do you foresee a scene taking place? Because, I mean, you've only got so many shots you can take. Sometimes it may be only one. But what are you seeing inside your imagination that eventually is going to land in front of us? That's a great question. And uh, for better or worse, I, I, I've i had this thing since I was a kid. I used to read like crazy since I could read when I was five or six years old. Uh, and reading books, I always kept visualizing everything that I was reading. I could visualize it like like a movie in my head. Mm-hmm. Same thing when I read the screenplay. I immediately see the scene in my head. And then I, I can rewind it and fast forward it. And, uh, and that's the experience. The first experience that I have when I'm reading something is what I'm trying to bring the audience. And I, the way I shoot the scenes, I try to put the audience in the driver's seat. I try to um, make the audience really feel like they are there, like they can relate to the character and, and experience what the character is experiencing. So that's how I choose my angles. And I try I try not to do what I see in some modern movies, which is just super fast cutting, super tight shots, mm-hmm. sometimes not being able to really tell what's going on. I want the audience to understand the geography of the situation, where everybody is, what they are doing. And even in the fight scenes, I, I, I like to go a little wider and really show what's going on instead of just being in, in really flashy, quick, fast, close cuts. When you talk about those wide angle shots right away, my mind is going, oh, man, would you ever do a VR movie where I could put on my ocular goggles and I can experience the movie by being in it? I would love to. I would love to. That technology is still, you know, it's it's developing uh, and it's a it's a little bit of a beast of its own. But we'll see what happens in the in the years to come uh, if that becomes more more of a of a way people want to experience this. But I'd love to do that. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on the bricklayer. Please come back to this show anytime in the future, Rennie. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, thank you so much. I I would love to. I'm sure we'll talk soon. You be brilliant, okay? Thank you. You too.